This patient was switched to brigatinib for, from crizotinib based upon uh, progressive disease on crizotinib. And that decision uh, was based upon the, Al the ALTA trial uh, for which brigatinib was FDA approved. That trial treated patients who progressed on crizotinib uh, with brigatinib. And what it found was a, um, a good overall response rate of about 54% and a progression-free survival rate of about 12.9 months. Clinical trials uh, with brigatinib after crizotinib have shown a median progression-free survival of anywhere between 12 and 16 months. Uh, and that is uh, numerically a very good number. Uh, that it also gets good blood-brain barrier penetration, which makes a lot of sense for this patient who has these asymptomatic brain metastases. And so I think it makes sense to choose brigatinib uh, as a treatment for this patient. Uh, electinib could also be considered as well. Brigatinib is a next generation ALK inhibitor uh, that does have some unique uh, features in terms of the spectrum of mutations it may have activity against. Uh, so in preclinical models, uh, brigatinib has more coverage for uh, ALK resistance mutations than sev several other ALK inhibitors. It gets uh, several more of the ALK dependent resistance mechanisms than electinib when looking at uh, in vitro data. Uh, it does not seem to get as well the G1202R mutation, which is often uh, refractory to electinib or brigatinib, uh, where lorlatinib may have activity against that particular mutation that's been seen in clinical trials. Now, it's unknown in patients who've had first-line electinib uh, what the response rate is with brigatinib after electinib. I think that's an area of active in investigation. You would expect, uh, based upon the preclinical data, that some mutations may be more sensitive than others to brigatinib uh, when patients have progressed on electinib. But certainly, uh, after crizotinib, there's a clear indication for uh, treating this patient with a next-generation ALK inhibitor such as brigatinib.